Hey everybody, Nerdquites here with another review. Um, slightly different uh, review this time. Uh, we're going to actually, um, it's uh, about a kit. I've been wanting to do this review for quite some time, but I wanted to give myself a few months uh, with the resulting, um, well, the, the results of a guitar kit that I bought, a bass guitar p uh, kit, and, and to be precise, a precision bass guitar kit. Um, this is from uh, GH, GH Rock, GHS Rock, out in Port Hope, Ontario. I bought this on eBay. It's a kit that was about $119, $120. It was 148 ship, taxes included, everything. And the nice thing about it was that it was in Canada, so I uh, didn't have to worry about duty and cross-border shipping or anything like that. Now, um, usually when I review stuff, um, I do tons and tons and tons of research before I actually get it so that I have a pretty good idea that I'm going to like a product when I receive it. Now, I'm going to, during the course of me talking here, I'm going to put some photos up so that you can see what the kit looked like, the components it came with. Obviously, I didn't use every single component on uh, that was in the kit. I've actually upgraded quite a few things. Now let's just switch back to the base itself. Um, obviously these covers here, they're aftermarket covers, if you will. Well, the whole base is after cover market. This is a pick guard that I had originally bought for Donald base, but that didn't fit because this was a standard Mexican uh, size and uh, the horns here weren't quite big enough. Uh, aside from that, what's stock on here? Well, the knobs are stock on here. Obviously, the body, the bridge, which is a perfectly fine bridge. Uh, it's a little different from your standard that you get on Squires and some Mexican uh, fenders is that it has these two extra screws. And this plate here is a little longer, too. Um, I originally was going to use the pots that was in the wire harness. Um, I decided against it. Well, I, I used them at first because they're perfectly solid pots. But uh, because I have upgraded the pickup that uh, didn't come with this, this is actually a guitar finish overwound 16.5 kilo ohms, which is like a very powerful pickup. Um, the hotter your pickup, the more bass response you get. And you lose a little bit of the top end when you use... Um, relatively low impedance uh, pots, potentiometers or pots, we call them for short. So I had to, I couldn't use them because they're typically 250k on a P base. Um, I had lots of low end, but I had absolutely no high end. And you do need a little bit on a base just for definition. So the volume one ends up being a one meg linear pot. And if you want to know about linear and logarithmic pots, uh, you could, you know, click to many other videos on the, on, on YouTube that can explain to you how those work. But this is a one meg uh, taper, uh, um, linear taper pot. And this is a 500k tone pot. And uh, those videos will explain why upping those values will help get a little bit more high end out of this base without sacrificing the low end. Um, the neck is nice on this. And... Uh, these aren't the tuners that come originally with it. Yes, I know I put Fender on there, but I just I did put Fender not licensed uh, by FMIC or by Fender. Memories of 19 was it 66 I put? Yeah, Memories of 1966 that I put on there. These aren't the tuners. These are actually classic vibes and I showed them actually. I showed them in a previous video of uh, how to convert them from right-handed to left-handed. They're the easily flippable kind. Uh, these are loaded up with GHS flat rounds. I've already done demos about that, but I guess I'll do another clip as well. Um, and this is made out of basswood, and I was able to make a nice, um, what I call old furniture burst. Uh, my dad actually has a kitchen table, uh, old kitchen table that we've had, you know, for decades that has a burst that, you know, resembles this quite a bit. So. You know, if you see there's like paint missing and all that, that's actually on purpose. It's all polyurethane, but it's relatively thin, so it does feel like 
you know, it still looks and feels like wood, so that's not so bad. Now, for the most part, the neck profile on this is, I'd say it's halfway between a Jazz and a P-Bass. It's a nice modern C profile. It's actually very easy to play. Uh, the rosewood, as you can tell, is actually quite nice. Uh, these are plastic inlays. They've got a little bit of pearlescence to them, just to say. Uh, but, you know, they're mother of toilet seat, as some people like to call them. The frets were actually not too bad on this. Uh, when I assembled this kit this summer, actually, this thing almost immediately played like a dream. I didn't even need to shim the neck. But since this winter, um, the neck curved up a little bit and I was starting to get buzz. And, I mean, the truss rod does work in this thing. But uh, it's very, it's very recessed in. It's really deep in, and um, well, it, it it's kind of finicky a little bit. Um, I'd have to say, in total, on this bass, not counting the strings, I spent about, I'd say, about two hundred and twenty dollars Canadian for this, and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. I like to look at it. I mean, I originally, I was hoping, I guess once upon a time, they did make Mexican fenders, left-handed fenders, but I gave up and uh, trying to find something that was decent. I mean, Donald's not bad, but I mean, his neck is like a baseball bat compared to this. This is a uh, much, much easier to play. <laughs> Right now I'm not using any processing whatsoever, I'm uh, not even using um, compression. This is just uh, the plain bass directly into the interface. Um, since coming here, however, there's been a bit of a grounding uh, problem, so uh, that's probably why you're hearing a little bit of hum. Anyway, I'm going to do an audio demo of this, although you've heard it before, I've used it in the GHS uh, a flat wound, uh shout out and and um also um was there another video i used this in no i think that's the only one i've done uh so far but uh, some of the recommendations i would have is that in the kit itself there are some things that you do need to upgrade they come they come with these and these are the cheap uh, chinese taiwanese knockoffs i mean they're not they're not bad uh these ones actually they turn pretty well but um, I'm not a big fan of these kinds of stems that are notched. I much prefer these ones here. Uh, these classic vibes, especially on this headstock. Oh, that's something actually I should mention about this headstock. If you're thinking of getting a base kit like this, uh, a lot of these Chinese made base kits, uh, they only have one centimeter from the post up to the top here. So a lot of the standard uh, classic open gear tuners like that you would find like Wilkinson's, for example, or a few others uh, like Fenders and Godos. Um, they won't exactly fit properly on here, uh, especially if you're the fan of having the uh, extra long stems like this. What I like about these classic vibes is that it makes these look like old style Cluson tuners or old style uh, Godo tuners that they have on the, on the Fender reissues. And so, I don't know, I just, find it looks more fendery that way. Now, of course, I came up with my own uh, logo for my instruments since making this bass, and I was contemplating actually stripping off this fender and putting that one on there, but um, I'm thinking against it. Anyway, enough yapping. I recommend this, uh, this bass kit, especially if you're hard up like us left-handed people, and you want to make yourself a decent P bass without breaking your bank. I highly recommend this route, uh, 220, 250 if you really want to go all out. Uh, that includes the pick guard, the uh, upgrades, all except the strings. The strings themselves, that's like separate because, I mean, you can choose whatever the hell you want. You can go cheap uh, round wounds or you can go flat wounds or you can even put labellas on here and break your bank account. Anyway, stay tuned for the real demonstration. <laughs> 